in the, uh, this video, I'm going to tie a dry fly known as a jingler. Now there's many different variations of the jingler. I'm going to tie three in this series. So this is jingler number one, probably the most simple and most basic one. So I like to tie them on gamma katsu hooks, but they're quite hard to get a hold of these dry fly hooks. But any sort of dry fly hook will do, but this is a size 12 and it's quite a long hook. I've tied in my Wisp 14 -0. Now, this is the most basic one uh, out of all the jinglers that I use. And, and the three, three flies I'm going to tie should do you for the whole season. Now, I'm using Cop de Leon for the tail. You can use Partridge if you want, but I find Partridge is a little more brittle. So, I'm going to use some Cop de Leon, which is actually a saddle cape. It's a cock saddle, so, you know, it's not super stiff like the, the really expensive Cock de Leon. And just tie that in. Take it to the bend. And I'm going to go forward here. I'm going to make sure that I try to keep the feathers so that we get a nice even body the whole way up. And just keep going. And keep going. Now we'll trim off the excess. But it's the that Cock de Leon is very much like a partridge hackle. It's very, very well marked as well. All I'm going to do is go back up and down a couple of times to build a wee body up. And I says this is the most simple one. Now, we're just making the body all of thread. And I says it's Wisp 14 -0. You can use uni thread as well. You can use yellow threads, you can use orange threads, you can use different colours, but I just find the olive. The three I use the most is the olive, the March Brown variation, and the strip quill one. Now, I'll stop a bit there. I want to go quite far back. At this point, I'm going to use a red game hackle. No, it's actually just a red game cock hackle. Uh, the one I'm using is a whitens, it's a bronze grade. Quite hard to get a hold of now, but uh, just about any sort of ready badgery type hackle will do because all it's really doing it's going to hold the fly up in the faster water. Right, so I've tied that in. And what I'm going to do is just four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. It's quite a lot of hackle, remember, but it's going to be hidden anyway. Ten, and just catch it in and trim it off. I actually had my biggest fish on the March Brown version on the Clyde last year. It's a brown at 59 centimeters. That's a wild brown, not a stocky. Not a salmon as some people thought because the salmon don't get up that far. Right, so that's for fly so far. Now the next thing I'm going to put in a partridge hackle. I've got a partridge hackle here, so what I'll do is I'll strip it there. And I should mention at this point, Jake Harvey gave me this fly a long time ago and I've caught heaps of fish on it. I can't tie them as bad as he can. His are all over the place, but they catch a lot of fish. Now what I've done is I've stripped the flue off this end. I've then pulled it all back. I'm going to tie it in just with the tip. So, catch it in. Trim that bit off. You can leave that on if you want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And just catch the stripped part. One turn, two turns until it looks right. Now it's not looking bushy enough, so I'm going to give it one more turn. Then I'm just going to catch it in, keeping all the feathers out of the way just now, and just trim it. Then just pull all the fibres back so that you've got a nice clear eye. But finish. Two what finishes. 
different. Then all I want to do that will do the varnish. Then you just push it forward. Now that might look like a big pile of feathers, but see when that's going down the river and it's sitting, the profile is phenomenal and the fish love it. They've caught fish everywhere with it. Uh, but the profile on that fly is just amazing. It sits right in the water. You just see the big wing going down and you can see that fly from miles away. It's a really top-notch fly.